That is now three straight wins for the Toronto Raptors as they barely, and I mean barely, scrape out a victory there in Atlanta. Was it pretty? Oh, God, no. It really wasn't. However, great teams find ways to win at all costs. And the Raptors did that this evening, winning 119-116 over the Atlanta Hawks down in Atlanta. And a big, and I mean a big portion of that, Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. They combine for 59 points. They are money. They they have, what, 12 assists combined. They were incredible. And uh, we'll get to the statistics in a second here. But this team grinded, fought, and, and just clawed their way. At one point, they were down by eight in the third quarter. They found a way to claw back, make it a, uh, was it a one-point game or a two-point game after three? Anyways, we'll get into that in a, in a second, but they found a way to win, guys, and I, I know it wasn't pretty, and, and you're not, you're not going to expect every game this year to be a beautiful, beautiful contest like you saw against Charlotte. You're not going to see that every day. So you're going to see games like this where you just scrap it out and you find ways to win. The Raptors are now 11-4 and four on the year. Won three straight. They're seven and three in their last ten games, and with uh, Miami losing to Philly today, uh, that basically means that the Raptors now have a three-way tie for second place in the Eastern Conference. Boston eleven and four, Miami eleven and four, and obviously the Raptors at eleven and four. So very good things happening there for the Raptors. They had to continue to win, continue to go out there every single night and and try and get a W, obviously. But uh, let's get to this ball game. Let's talk about this game at hand now. First quarter. Kind of back and forth. Not really any fluent stuff going on in the first quarter. Uh, not a lot of scoring there early on in the in the game. But the first quarter did end 27-26. Hawks, the Raptors were down by one after one quarter of play. And in the second quarter, the Raptors just really couldn't defend very well. They give up 34 points. Score only 26. Minus eight in the quarter. They're minus nine at the half. And they gave up what? You know, over 60 points. I think it was like 61-52 at the half. That is not very good. We are not used to seeing that from the Toronto Raptors. But they need to turn it around here in the second half to come away with a victory. And it helps that Pascal Siakam is a freak at times. Because coming out of the uh, coming out of halftime, Pascal drops back-to-back threes to cut the deficit down to three. Now, in that third quarter, the Raptors' offense kills it. 35 points scored. They only allowed 29, plus six in the quarter. Do the math. You're only down by three after three quarters of play. You're right in. That's a one-possession ball game. And early on in the fourth, the Raptors kind of just grab hold of that quarter, and they, they, they just move on. And they at one point, they're up by 10 with like two minutes left. But then it falls apart, and you're only up by three. They have a chance to take the or to tie the game, but um, but Trey Young misses the last shot, and the Raptors are able to come away with a victory. And ooh, got us a little more worried than I think we were. I thought we were gonna be, but it's a victory. It's a win. You move on. You don't watch tape of this game because you weren't good, but you move on. And I'm kind of happy they had this game today. The reason I say that, the next contest, you're facing off against the Philadelphia 76ers at home. You want to be your best then, all right? So to be not the greatest today, but get the victory, that's all right. I'm okay with that. Now let's get to some numbers here and kind of see where the Raptors went wrong. Bottom line, defensively, they just weren't good enough. That's just the way it was. You know, Atlanta shot 52% from the field, 41% from three. They knocked down 14 threes. That's huge. Um, Raptors got to the line 30 times. They only got to the line 11 times. Not really sure uh, where what happened there. But, to, again, that's just the way it happens, you know, in basketball, I guess, at times. Rebounding were plus four in favor of the Raptors in offensive glass. The Raptors were plus four, 12, eight. But the Raptors only shot 46% from the field, 34, 35% from three. Now, they were 26 of 30 from the line, 87%. One of the best teams in the NBA at the line, and you need to be at times. And it was a great job by the Raptors there. They knocked down 13 threes. Uh, again, lower mar- lower margins than we were used to seeing, plus the defense wasn't as good as we've gotten used to seeing from the Toronto Raptors. But uh, 22 assists, not bad. They had 32, but the Raptors did have 22 assists, so that's okay. And the turnovers were 15 turnovers. It's a little much, you know. Uh, we want this team to be in that 12 and under range. Uh, 15 is a little much. Points in the paint, we actually lost that by 8, 58-50. But uh, second chance points, again, the Raptors were plus four in the offensive glass, so they were plus seven 
in second chance points, 21-14. And in the fast break, Raptors only won by two, 16-14. Again, like we talked about, the Raptors weren't as good as we've been used to seeing in this game. And the numbers here are just backing that up. They weren't that great. Now, Trey Young, incredible. He had a triple-double, 30-10-10. and 10. I mean, remarkable by Trey Young. But the Raptors, they had their own, you know, and who's their who's their second leading scorer? Yeah, the young guy, DeAndre Hunter. I mean, he's a fantastic kid. He had 26. But the Raptors, they had their own duo, and, and they were money today. Pascal Siakam, 34 points, four boards, three dimes for Pascal, 11 of 18 shooting, eight of nine from the line, four of six from three, a steal, two blocks, and a, and a plus six while he was on the floor. Pascal Siakam, what a game for P. Skilly. I thought he was awesome. And uh, OG and Obi again, rough night for him and rough night shooting for uh, Marcus Gasol. Uh, OG had seven points, four boards, and an assist in 26 minutes, but he only shot three of 10, 0 of two from three, it went one of two from the line, and he was, still was a plus two while he was on the floor, but uh, again, not much of an impact game for OG and Obi and Marcus Gasol, like I said, only shot one of five, was one of three from three, had two steals, a block, he was a plus seven, he made an impact, three points, seven rebounds, and three assists. Now, like I said, the Raptors had their own dynamic duo. We talked about it right off the top. Fred Van Vliet, as much as only he only shot 7 of 21, which is only, what, 33% from the field. But he had 25 points, 5 re... Uh, 7... Uh, sorry, where are we here? 25 points, 3 rebounds, and he had 9 assists. So he had almost, almost double-double for Freddie Van Vliet. He had a steal in the ball game. He did have five turnovers. He didn't look that great in this one when it comes to ball handling. But a uh, plus 11 while he was on the floor. Great job there by Freddie Van Vliet. And Norman Powell, you know what? He had his impact. Uh, it's, that's the thing, right? They had that one-two punch of DeAndre Hunter and Trey Young. But where was their third guy? Well, Jabari Parker, 13 on, on 6 of 16 shooting. Not great. But the Raptors had Norman Powell of 20 points on 8 of 15 Three of eight from three. He we made the one free throw he took. He was, but he was a minus eleven when he was on the floor. But again, that all comes with you know who was out there with you and kind of how hot they were at the time. So plus minus is kind of an awkward stat to kind of go off of. Rodney Hollis Jefferson goes out there and just gives you energy. That's what we've gotten used to seeing. He does that again today. Seven points, nine rebounds, four dimes on two of three shooting, three of four from the line. Missed the one three. He took out a steal and a block. Did Rondé, and he was a minus five. Terrence Davis didn't have his Terrence Davis type of game that it could be like we've been used to seeing lately. Had six points, three boards, and one assist on two of six shooting, one of three from three. Had a, one free throw and made it. Um, uh, blocked a shot, plus one while he was on the floor. But again, not much of an impact game for him. And Chris Boucher uh, continues, continues to impress me. The length of him is incredible, but also the smart. I mean, I saw him take a charge out there today that was, you know, Kyle Lowry-esque. You know, a, a big guy driving, and usually you'd see him go up for a block, right? We've gotten so used to seeing him just try to block guys. But he got out of the restricted area. He set his feet. He did a great job of taking the charge, and the Raptors get the ball and move on. And it was a great job by Chris Boucher as well. Whoa, what happened there? As well, in only 15 minutes, 13 points, 8 rebounds on 5 of 7 shooting, 1 of 2 from 3, 2 of 2 from the line. Great job. And he's a minus 5, but uh, a great job by Chris Boucher. Uh, in this game, and Matt Thomas played 10 minutes, had four points, and that was all she wrote. So the Raptors continue to win games without Lowry and without Serge Ibaka. Incredible. You're doing great. Uh, obviously, you know, you want these guys back. I'm going to actually really quickly check with you guys live here. Um, kind of, you know, any update on these guys? Kyle Lowry, any update? So uh, one day ago, could return next weekend. So, we, again, we really don't know a timetable, though. It's kind of a could, possibly, maybe... But um, could return next weekend. It kind of tells you this, that, that, that there is progress being made with Kyle Lowry and that thumb. So it's good to see there. And for Serge Ibaka, um, the the thoughts was the thoughts were that he could possibly play tonight, but he was officially ruled out six hours ago on the score at least uh, that he was ruled out for today's game. So. With that being said, and him kind of being a game-time decision, he could possibly uh, be ready for Monday against the Philadelphia 76ers in, excuse me, at home at Scotiabank Bank Arena. All right. Anything, uh, any other injury-wise we want to look at? Patrick McCaw, what's he saying? How's he doing? Uh, he's ahead of schedule. We heard that a day ago. He's ahead of schedule. Anything going on there? He's pain-free and moving well. So that's great to see for Patrick McCaw. He's going to be up and ready soon. Stanley Johnson with his groin injury. Uh, he'll miss two weeks. That was five days ago. So he's going to be out a little bit, uh, is Stanley Johnson. Obviously, he hasn't played a lot. But you want everybody healthy. 
so you can have options. All right. Now, I've been teasing it. I've been talking about it. The next game for the Raptors is on Monday, 7.30 tip-off at Scotiabank Arena. Philadelphia 76ers, Toronto Raptors. Look, Philly, they're playing great ball lately. They've won four straight games. The Raptors have won three straight games. The Raptors are at home, who are undefeated at home. And as for Philly, uh, I think they're 7-0 and at home, but they're 4-5 and on the road. So it's going to be a very interesting thing to kind of see what happens with the uh, with the Raptors at home, taking on Philly, both teams who are undefeated at home. But the problem is, you got to do good on the road. And the Raptors are four and five on the road. They are four, or sorry, we are five and four at home uh, on the road. They are four and five. That's kind of where we're going at there. And uh, for the Raptors, look, you just got to come out flying. First time you've played these guys since that Kawhi shot, the shot in the Eastern Conference uh, semifinals against the 76ers last season. Obviously, they want somewhat of revenge. But um, a regular season game really ain't revenge. But let's kind of bury that. Because you remember what? Remember how Joel Embiid got gobbled up in the playoffs? Marc Gasol. Oh, he's still here. And everyone's going to say, well, Embiid was sick. You're still huge. Marc Gasol made him look silly in the playoffs. And we're hoping that can happen again on Monday. As for Ben Simmons, still not a shooter. The Raptors guards are going to do a great job clamping down on him. We're going to have to see how it all plays out, though, on Monday. It's going to be a heck of a ball game at Scotiabank Arena on Monday night. All right? So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed the ball game today because it was stressful, you're pulling your hair out. But they won the ball game. Smack that like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your guys' thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video. Uh, who'd you like, who'd you not like in this game today? I thought, obviously, Siakam was great, and Freddie made a huge impact in, the, in every which way, as he usually does. Uh, Norman Powell has continuously showed us that he is uh, continuing to grow as a player, and I think he he's he's looking really, really nice in that starting shooting guard role. He, does not, he doesn't want to go on the bench. When Lowry comes back, I don't know what's going to happen, so it's going to be very interesting to see how kind of how they mold this and how to, how it all works out. But Norm has been great. I want to hear your guys' thoughts, everything towards the Toronto Raptors ball club. And I will talk to you, or so Twitter is down below as well, guys. Follow up, send me DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition. It'll be on Wednesday as the Buds are in Detroit taking on the Red Wings as the Leafs look to uh, continue on the nice little roll that they've been on there. They won two straight games, both on the road against uh, very good hockey clubs. So you look to face a team not very good in Detroit, in Detroit, wait, in Detroit, in Detroit. Okay, that's a very interesting. I uh, didn't that didn't sound right coming out, but you guys kind of get what I mean. You know, you're not facing a good team in Detroit, but you're facing them in Detroit, so it's kind of weird. But as for the Leafs, I mean, look, they they've lost five straight, five straight games. Beat them down. Get the dub. Win three straight. Feel great. Let's see how it goes on Wednesday for the Leafs. And as for our Toronto Raptors, as we've talked about. Their next game is Monday in a highly anticipated contest as Raptors host the 76ers in Toronto at Scotiabank Arena. Like I said, 7.30 tip-off. It's exciting. I can't wait. All right. So I'll talk to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys then.